Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. The focus in this video is on sample variation in various lenses. The reason I'm doing this video is recently I tested several 50 millimeter lenses, 50 millimeter 1.4s, and then also slower versions of those lenses, so a couple 55s and a couple 50s. Uh, and what I noticed, and I was a little surprised at, is when I did the 1.4s, uh, the 50 1.4 Minolta Rocor X, which is a multi-coated lens, just had a good deal lower contrast than the others. And then when I tested the slower lenses, the 50 millimeter F2 Nikkor was just not as sharp as the others, and, and by a good bit, especially at, as we moved away from the center. So um, I figured, well, maybe these lenses just aren't up to specs. So I had another 50 F2 Nikkor. It was a slightly older version. It was the 50 F2 HC, while the lens that was first tested was a 50 F2 K uh, version. They are identical optically. Both are multi-coated. The only difference is the cosmetics. The K version has the rubberized um, focus ring, and the 50HC is, is all metal. Uh, but otherwise, identical. As far as the Minolta's, I only had one copy of the 51.4 Rocor X. So uh, I was really curious, so I just went out on eBay and picked up another one. So um, they look to both be in excellent condition. So I ran some additional tests, and the row cars were, were very similar uh, in performance. Uh, the newer lens, the newer lens that I tested, I should say, uh, was, um, had a little bit more contrast. It was an improvement. And the Nikkor wide open, they were pretty much identical, but as I did move to the edges, as I looked at those images, um, the uh, older lens, actually, the HC, um, was a little bit sharper. It was definitely better, especially the further you got away from center. So um, I figured I would do a video on this because that is a common thing, sample variation. Even in brand new lenses, there could be some variation. Uh, what, is, what, is, what causes that? Uh, could be the optical glass. Uh, maybe the glass in one lens was, is a little bit better than the ones in the other. The manufacturing. Uh, I, manufacturers have tolerances for lenses, so maybe one fell towards the lower end of those tolerances, and, and that's why it varies. Usually with new lenses, it's not a great difference. Um, but it could be. Maybe it's a defective lens. In a case like that, you would just uh, return it to the place you purchased it, and usually reputable um, dealers will give you a new lens. Uh, but as far as older lenses, used lenses, and all these lenses I tested were used, uh, you know, some of them 50, 60 years old, um, you don't know how that lens was treated. Now, it may look good on the outside, um, it may not have any uh, haze, no separation of elements, uh, there's no scratches, but still there could be a difference. You don't know how it was stored. You don't know if it was ever dropped. You know, possibly it was dropped, but there was no um, physical damage that you could see. However, it could have uh, misaligned the elements inside. I mean, I really don't know what uh, could happen, uh, but... Um, could be stored improperly. Maybe it was stored in a high, an area of high humidity, which could have an effect on lens. Usually, um, when stored in an area with high humidity, sometimes you will get a fungus um, on some of the inner elements, even the outer elements. And of course, that's going to affect uh, picture quality. A lot of us are very concerned with sharpness. I know when I first uh, got interested in photography in the uh, early 70s, uh, I would always read the test reports. Uh, but back then, there was nowhere near 
the information available that we have today. Uh, I, I had subscribed to both modern and popular photography magazines, and they would do some testing of lenses uh, just about every month. And uh, modern photography had a chart basically listing each aperture at the center and at the edge, and they would give it a rating of excellent or very good or good or poor or acceptable. And uh, popular photography went into a little more detail in uh, their tests, uh, testing such things as vignetting and um, various aberrations um, and uh, even the uh, measured and marked focal length because even though a lens is marked 50 millimeter, it may not be exactly 50 millimeter. So, uh, but I was very, you know, when I first got interested, I'm thinking, oh my God, I don't, I don't want a lens that has acceptable rating or a poor rating. Um, so uh, I would always look for the lenses that were, you know, had mostly excellence. So sharpness isn't always the most important thing. It depends on the subject matter. It depends on whether you're using it on a film camera or a digital camera. And if you're using it on a digital camera, are you using it on a 12 megapixel camera or a 20 or, you know, or a 46 megapixel camera? So um, the higher megapixel camera is going to require a sharper lens. Um, but, you know, what is your subject matter? Are you doing portraits? Um, you don't always need the sharpest lens for portraits. I mean, almost every, I do a lot of headshots and uh, almost in all cases, I apply a little softening. Um, so uh, today's lenses are extremely sharp. The um, lenses for mirrorless cameras, I have an 85 millimeter 1.8 for the Nikon Z system, and that lens is extremely sharp. So uh, doing a headshot, I'm gonna apply some, uh, some softening. Uh, in post. Um, other situations, you want the sharpest lens. Um, architectural photography, uh, landscape photography in a lot of cases, you want you know, center to edge sharpness, uh, especially if you're going to print large. And that's another thing. If you're only going to be posting them on Instagram or Facebook or just for web use, you don't need the sharpest lenses. It's just you're not going to tell the difference in small images on the web. Uh, same thing with small prints. If you're only going to be printing 4x6 or 5x7, uh, you're not going to see a big difference between you know, a, a very expensive, very sharp lens and one of uh, lesser optical quality. So uh, you know, on the other hand, if you're going to do um, large size prints, you know, 24 by 30s or larger, you're going to want a sharper lens if, if, if it's a landscape and you want edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. So um, there's a lot of things involved. It's a, it depends a lot, again, on the subject matter. Uh, so don't get too crazy about sharpness. Recently, I tested two 58 millimeter 1.4s, one from Minolta and one from Nikon. Uh, the Nikkor lens was an early, actually it was the first 1.4 that Nikon introduced uh, back in 1959 with the Nikon F. And it is not very sharp wide open, but it gives a dreamy look, great bokeh, and uh, for certain subjects, certain portrait subjects, maybe even some landscape stuff, um, some flower photography, whatever. Um, some still life photography, uh, it just gives a different look than the modern, extremely sharp lenses. So if you're a landscape photographer or an architectural photographer and you want the best possible sharpness, obviously a modern lens is going to probably do better than the vintage ones. However, if you stop those vintage lenses down uh, to 5.6 or even f8, uh, you're going to get the best out of those lenses and most of them that I have seen, that I've owned and that I have tested are perfectly fine at those smaller apertures. So uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. 
And if you didn't, I'd like to know that too. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to criticism, so please let me know what you didn't like. Um, I usually come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. So uh, stay tuned, and I will talk to you then.